For those of you who have not attended my mandatory seminars, I am the amazing Sargasso, conduit of the preborn, communicant superior of the order of galvanic progress. Since 2016, the true author of the tweets of Joyce Carol Oates. In my hypoallergenic chamber, I was recently bequeathed and copy of the Everly Green Review and Intelligencer, reading the latest number of this fascinating journal. I read the report entitled A Parenthetical. It inspired my own meditations on love and loss, and I resolved to share with you tonight my recent correspondence with the advertisements editor of Dirigible Fortnightly. <laughs> to which, dear madam, I write to instruct your department forthwith to pose the following listing in the situation vacant section of your estimable journal. Notable prognosticologist, mesmeric thought leader, seeks a master of the D for elevated <coughs> operations on a regular basis. Are you used to the habit of command? Is your natural state one to ride loftily above, buoyantly surveying those below, impressing your will upon the very ebbs and flows of the world? The sub-E, Sargasso's Unified Bureau for Exploratory Exploitation, now advertises for just such a bold and forthright figure, a titan who lives and breathes D, who imposes with adamantine stiffness the thrust of a visionary intelligence upon all who serve under him. From the gondola that dangles enticingly below the toply stretched gutta percha fabric of one of the sub E's airships, the master shall lead the Bureau's rapidly embiggening staff to dizzy new heights. Reply at once by pneumatic mail to Postal Box 5, Swinburne Alley. This notice to run both the morning and tea time edition of the Dirigible Fortnightly until Candlemas. It was except, except for the amazing Sargasso. <laughs> My next message. Dear Madam, I write to instruct your department forthwith to post the following listing in the missed airships connections of your estimable journal. You, dark, mysterious, brooding, sporting leather jumpers and a smoldering hauteur at the municipal airship yard this night previous. Me, mesmerist and man about town. <laughs> Glad for a working evening in a simple frock coat and a silken aviator's working breeches. The bold, impetuous moon leapt up into the night, scattering the clouds as a wolf does the sheep. Yet down below on the walkways, amongst the great inflatings that surrounded us, you seemed to prefer the shadows. We spoke in terms financial, operational, of contracts and manifests, of bills of lading and rates of ascent. Yet something about you remained out of my reach. In my steam-shrouded imaginings, we might have spoken of my needs, my desperate needs, for an unyielding hand upon the controls, for a single voice heard over the galvanic tintibulator by crew and passengers alike, for an eye that gleams like Rigel on the rise over the sleeping hot fields of Kent. But before we could settle on a test flight, I heard only the clank of your hobnail boots receding into the distance. The engorged tumescence of the great dirigibles all around <laughs> seemed like laughing gods who mocked my helplessness. Reply at once by pneumatic mail to both the one side, Swinburne Alley. This notice to run both the morning and tea time edition of the dirigible fortnightly until further notice. If you would kindly post a copy in the tea room below your offices, where the more raffish and delightful of the airship community are known to circulate, I would be grateful for yours, etc. <laughs> Dear Madam, please immediately cancel the missed airships connections and post this notice in the situation's vacant column. Do you believe in the value of commitment? Is your watchword reliability? Are you the type who would hate to leave your potential employer, as they say, hanging? If you're not one of those John Burr come latelys 
who would tease a colleague by making an elaborate and bold and really breathtaking plan for working up an airship fleet of mighty and implacable power, only to completely bail on the agreed night for a secret test run over the moors. If that sounds like a frankly shitey way to treat a person who really had laid it all out for you, had left his entire organization's operations rather nakedly on the line, then maybe you have what it takes to enter a real working relationship with an airship-centric bureau with big dreams and an impatience for the immature. No blink virgins need apply. Hit me up by pneumatic mail at postal box five. This notice to run the special call-out box advertisement on page two, just above the balloon polo results. Dear madam, Please cancel all previous advertisements and notices from Sargasso's Unified Bureau. I must confess, the dirigible captaincy scene demands more than perhaps even the world's foremost manifesto of foreknowledge can expect to offer. I have a notion, perhaps the notion of a very foolish, soft, weak, childish, little man, that somewhere out there, somewhere among the hissing valves and bulbous helium sacks of the hurly burly airship world, there was a captain who had grasped my mission, whose mutton chop whiskers would twitch with anticipation as he read, in my beseeching eyes, the coded transmission of those fervent hopes, whose massive sinews would flex within the corded fabric of his jumpsuit as he unconsciously unlimbered his physical resources in preparation for the mighty challenge of command. Was it really so unreasonable that I, the proprietor of one of the most advanced workhouses in the capital, the host of the hit reality stage program Sargasso's Stance Makeovers, the patent holder for Sargasso's immolifying unquit, that I could not find a soul ready to take up the brazen badge and mount, mount, mount the steed of brass and vapor that I was panting to provide? In short, dear madam, I despair. I despair of finding my master of the D. There was, etc., the Indians in Sargasso. Dear Madam, please place in your classified advertisements in the missed airship connection section the following message. You, oh Captain, my Captain. <laughs> Me, just a silly old conduit of the pre-born with a few airships in my name and a crazy dream that I had last night. Or was it a dream? We met among the quiescent but fully inflated ships. You were silent, but oh, your silence was eloquence itself. A look, a gesture, a stern wave of your gauntleted finger, and all was clear. I took the part of the dutiful crew, trembling for your haughty directives. A valve was turned, a wheel rotated, and suddenly membranes once flaccid took on shape, flexed into firmness over my head, the massive, long shape bulged proudly. We rose into the velvet night, riding over the endless unconscious towns below, but I had no thought for them, only for the wordless commands that guided us further and further into a night of endless possibility. I write this from a nameless cafe near the beach where I last saw you. Our descent in the storm, I remember only in flickers of memory, your powerful thighs, holding the control rods just so. <laughs> Your back arched in a leather and captain's harness. At the end, you were exhausted. You had given yourself, spent your own body's virility in the control of the great dirigible as it rode the winds. Mastery and submission had become one. Tomorrow night at the aerodrome, we launch our express service to Cornwall. I will be on the mooring platform wearing an opera cloak, smoked goggles, and clenching between my trembling lips a single red rose. I cannot say whether I will see you there, but I no longer despair of my master. Thank you.